Teachable Moments was a philosophy, but it transitions us into kind of, it's kind of fitting because it's, it's both. Um, and it's the idea of creating teachable moments out of everything. And that's why it becomes a superpower and a tool belt tool because, um, you know, it's, it goes back to like getting those first graders to sit quietly and raise their hand. It's like, oh, I love how Johnny's sitting with great posture and his eyes are on me and he's ready to go. And look at Jenny. Jenny, thanks for eyes are here. I love how you're sitting up straight. And then what's everybody do? They fall in the line. So I was using teachable moments in a positive way and I'd get a class of seven seventh graders that, you know, seventh grade is like the worst year of anyone's life for the most part, right? <laughs> seventh grade is that it challenging for, me, for, yeah, for, sure. for humans in general. I think it fits the, everyone has the same reaction that you just had that I say that to. Um, it's just a, such a challenging year for so many reasons. And um, so with my seventh grade classes, I was, you know, we always, we say we were in the lab and I was doing experiments with our work on kids. So one day, um, I saw one of my uh, strategies coming to fruition. When you break a tie in floor hockey, you choose one person on your team to shoot the penalty shot or the, the overtime shot. And uh, it's like a kind of like a penalty shot. It's on an open goal and it's really challenging to do for a lot of different reasons I won't go into. But a lot of the, you know, the seventh grade mindset is like, let him do it. He's the best hockey player. He's the stud. And, and if somebody doesn't say that, he says, I'm going to do it. I play hockey and they step up there. And then somebody will grab the stick and say, no, I want to do it. And then there's this problem that it, it's a great teachable moment, but that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kid I've been training to be a superhero. And he says, guys, let him do it. And it's that kid who can't walk and chew gum, who never, he probably hasn't even touched the puck yet, right? So now he steps up because this kid, my, super, my superhero in training, his name happened to be Zach, steps up and... Uh, gives Tyler the chance and Tyler shoots and he wins the game and they pick him up over his shoulders. And just like the boy I referred to earlier who'd never been apologized to, went, how many times in that kid's life, in, he's a seventh grader and his you know, seven years of schooling, how many times has he been picked up by his peers and celebrated? The answer is zero. And that's because he's got a lot of things going on. He's uncoordinated, unskilled, and he's an introvert. I uh, could tell you a few other things about him. And uh, this kid gives him the opportunity to be, to be celebrated. So what I started doing was telling my other classes, did you guys hear about the miracle on the hardwood? Did you hear about the miracle on the hardwood? And I made a big deal out of that game and made a point that it wasn't this guy that made the shot. It was the kid on the team who hadn't really gotten a lot of opportunities. And what's the ripple effect? Other kids want to stick up and say, hey, let them shoot, you know, or step back and say, you do it. So that's a teachable moment. It doesn't have to be something ugly. But I think everything, you know, just, and I, I apply it every day. I mean, we're not making this stuff up. You know, about a month ago, I had an art teacher come in the room furious because a kid under my watch, who it wasn't even my student at the time, but he signed a pass to come in, was out in the hallway on his phone. Now I knew he went into the hallway, but I didn't know he was on his phone. And she was passing and said, hey, you can't be on your phone. And uh, we don't really have a, a intense cell phone rule. I wish there were no cell phones in schools, personally, that's my belief, and I could back it up with strong science. But, uh, and, and we could have an argument if you believe cell phones have a place in school, but because uh, I know that some people do think that, but for the most part, I don't think they s serve a great purpose or distract. So this kid's on the phone and she's telling him he shouldn't be on the phone. And he does like this to her and turns because he was in a bit of a crisis, right? But she sees this, disrespect. So he's as he's walking away from her after he hangs up, she's still in his ear and he says the F word to her. Now, he's not my student that period. He just happens to be signed in. So essentially, he was my responsibility. So she comes in furious at me, wanting me to hammer him, wanting me to discipline him. And this is a kid who's in 11th grade. So he's a young adult, right? And uh, he's at the other end of the room just stewing because she knows she's telling on him. And I said, listen, I said, I'll talk to him. And, I, and she wanted me to do it then. I said, give me, I said, I got class going on right now. I said, just give me some time, I'll talk to her. So uh, she was really upset, didn't think I was gonna handle it. You know, I don't know the story she was making up in her mind, but she leaves. So I call the kid over and he comes over, still uh, elevated. I said, listen, take a few minutes to relax. I said, even if I gotta write you a pass to your next class, take some time to relax. I said, I wanna talk to you about what happened. 
So he's, you know, oppositional. He's got some aces. He's got stuff going on. And we had a conversation after he cooled down and the bell was about to ring. And so it took a little bit into the next period. And I said, you know, listen, you and I are going to disagree right now because you think you were justified in your reaction. And I don't think you were. You were disrespectful. I said, but you're not going to walk out of here and use the F word on me. I said, what's, what's the difference? And he said, well, you're treating me with respect, blah, blah, blah. So we came to this agree to disagree understanding and had some good conversation on it. I expressed to him he's got to apologize to her at some point in the near future when he cools down. He wasn't ready to then. But I said to him, and this is where it becomes a teachable moment. I said, I'm glad it happened. And he like everything, the record stopped. He looked at me. I said, this is probably the most learning you've done in a few months because it was June, right? Mm. And he smiled and he walked away. And then I went and saw her and I told her his story and connected some of the dots on some of the aces that I know that he has. And she became more understanding. She was cooled down at that time too. And um, you know, the administration found out about it because she wrote him up. But I think she had a deeper understanding of him and herself, the, mis the mistake I think she made not knowing a kid and just, you know, interrupting. You, you don't, his house could have been burning down. You don't know what was going on. Clearly, you know, he, he shouldn't have been on his phone. Mm -hmm. But um, so that was a, a real positive, you know, powerful teachable, teachable moment that, you know, a kid did use the F word on a teacher. I don't have any tolerance for that. I believe in accountability and demand respect. But I also think in 10 years, there won't be such a thing as a swear word. It's possible. I encourage all teachers to approach every situation with just asking the question, what's happening or what happened? And then you can get the explanation instead of put that away, shut up, right. you know, get off your phone, that sort of thing. And maybe if she had approached it that way, she, he would say, like, I'm dealing with something pretty serious. Give me some space, you know? Right. Yeah. And I think having the teachable moment um, really lends well to the growth mindset mm -hmm. and the philosophy around that. Um, and to understand that nearly every moment could be a teachable moment, you know, and, and how often we screw up these moments and we don't make them teachable moments because we're trying to prove a kid right or prove a kid wrong or prove a colleague wrong. I don't think sometimes we take into account the amount of teachable moments there are amongst colleagues in education as well. I was in Long Island a couple of years ago and like I love hitting the cafeteria the second I can because you, you saw me in your cafeteria. Yeah, like that's the only place I really want to be because like get off the stage, stop presenting, talk to kids, listen to what's really going on in the school. Mm -hmm. And I go in and I make my way down and I'm sitting with these senior lunch and I sit with these girls and um, one of their friends goes walking by and it's a great big opening and, and she kind of like does this funny walk by and then she like walks by the doorway and she sees me at the table so she kind of like goes in reverse. It was like, it was cute. It was like, something you'd picture like it was literally in reverse and she just comes in and there's this very distinguished white-haired woman's monitor at the table right in front and as she walks in and she's making a beeline for her friends that I'm sitting with this lady's like hey and I was like it, it snapped my neck over to mm -hmm. her and mm -hmm. uh and I, I I lined my head up with this one girl at my table so this white-haired woman couldn't see me and I said something I'm not proud of I said who's old Corella DeVille over there and these girls are like, oh, I got out of her class. And this other girl's like, me too. And um, uh, she just throws her out of the uh, lunchroom, their friend that was coming in to just say hi to me or take a picture or whatever it was. And um, I actually made my way over back to that table later on and apologized to those young ladies. And I said, eh, I shouldn't have said that. I just, it was a reaction. It was my tiny little immature brain that <laughs> made that comment. Yep. Um, but I got up and I went to the modeling other. Modeling behavior. Yeah, exactly. And, mm -hmm. um, and I corrected it, but I went to the other end of the lunchroom and as I was walking, I see um, this big stack of books and I can remember thinking, this is my inn. And I remember thinking, how in the heck is somebody carrying this stack of books? Like somebody carried it and set it on the table and on the top was this binder with a plastic sheet and inside it was a $100 bill with a woman's head um, like photographed on top of a $100 bill. And I walked over and I'm like, who's that? It was like my inn. And this lady, girl, young lady at the table was like, oh my God, that's my health teacher, I love her. And there was like this amazing contrast from one end to the lunchroom of young ladies that are running from this woman um, to um, a health teacher that they loved 
like two yes. completely different contrasts. But as I made my way back, because I knew I had to apologize to those young ladies about what I had said about Corel and DeVille, um, and I went over it, I knew it couldn't just be an empty apology. And I, I, I said to him, I said, you know, she's communicating with you too. I said, she like snapped all her heads around yelling at your friend. I said, might be something going on in her life. Mm -hmm. You know, her mom might be sick or yeah. things aren't going well. And I just took it as a time to have a teachable moment with those young ladies to say adults don't always make the best decisions and react. So, and I think it was good for them. I mean, I never got a chance to follow up with them, but to have a teachable moment um, and say, hey, adults are human too. I think I, I felt like it made an impact on them. Mm -hmm. So t I think teachable moments are everywhere. I think you can flip those moments, you know, like a flipped classroom. There's flipped moments, and some some moments are uncomfortable, and you know, appear disrespectful and emotion get you emotional. But I think you can flip pretty much any moment and make it teachable. And I think restorative practices does that. Community circles do that, and and you know, that's when you can really uh, enhance emotional intelligence and make you know that a teachable moment quite powerful for some of the things that go on that get kids emotional. So um, I think it all, you know, connects and uh, the uh, the teachable moment really can be um, quite powerful. And those are the things that people remember. This isn't necessarily, you know, it's, it's how you responded and it's the interaction that you had. And those are the things that impact kids the most.